Hello, uh, my name is Meredith Sloda. I'm the product manager for the Synapse platform and I work with um, Sage Bio Networks. Um, and I'm gonna acknowledge right away that if you're looking at the link in the uh, etherpad, I cheated and hid a bunch of slides that have more information in case you're curious. Um, but I'm gonna try to keep the actual presentation pretty short. Um, so Sage Bio Networks is a research organization, um, nonprofit, um, focused on open science and building up research communities to do reproducible open science in research communities. Um, it's mission driven and focused on the idea that um, building collaboration and communication and enabling open science will actually just make science better. Um, and we spoke earlier about byproducts of uh, you know, different projects and this whole platform is essentially a byproduct. Um, of the work that Sage was trying to do to build these open science communities. So uh, I'm okay with that as a product manager, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna be working on ways to make it better going forward. Um, so it was originally built up by the scientists. They were, they were sort of dictating their needs, um, sharing across these different institutional boundaries, working with sensitive human data. These were all challenges that hadn't really been solved in a kind of efficient or easy to implement way um, when they built the platform about 10 years ago when they started building the platform. Um, so we we're working in all of these different groups um, across specific consortia or specific collaborations, um, but the tools that they were building were appropriate for kind of any kind of group. So I want to draw the, the distinction between the organization SAGE and the platform Synapse because um, they're frequently conflated, but the work that SAGE is focused on has sort of allowed Synapse to flourish and become this more um, generalizable tool for open science and is now accessible and usable for uh, anybody, not just people working in these specific communities. Um, so there's some links here for later, but uh, it's fully open source. It's an API enabled platform and the goals are supporting open, um, although we'll talk in a little bit about like open being not necessarily um, all the way public, but open amongst groups um, and setting it up to be public. And it's striving to support collaborations in the research space, not just publication or data archiving. These are active working collaborations full of errors and uh, though hopefully no retractions, but revisions and edits and things like that. Um, and we also want to make sure that the work that they're doing is reproducible. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. I hate architecture diagrams, so this is a cartoon instead. Um, <laughs> the goal of what I'm trying to show here is that uh, we believe that everything should be really driven by the API. So we consume our own dog food in a variety of ways, um, and it's all based on this RESTful API layer. Um, so work done, our goal is to um, connect people working across primarily institutional boundaries, although sometimes those barriers exist even within the same institutions or even within the same labs. Um, so it's any kind of research. Um, we want to connect. We have um, analytic clients written in R and Python that operate off of the same API as our web client to allow more computational folks to uh, talk to people who would prefer to write in real words. Um, so <laughs> again, trying to bring together these communities of researchers. Um, and then the piece at the bottom is just to denote federated storage because um, we sort of learned from the very beginning that we're not going to be the one platform that everybody flocks to. Um, necessarily, that would be cool, but it may not happen. So we don't necessarily want to own your data. You should keep it wherever you want to and we will link to it instead. Um, and the idea is that you can build up these connections between people, between tools, between data, um, and start to form cohesive research projects out of them. And they're sort of ever evolving, but always connected via metadata um, and the API. So <laughs> I saw a couple other people showing research lifecycle slides. Um, this is more about how different features of Synapse support team science um, and how team science is not just this linear path between, oh, I have an idea, let me get some data, and then I'm going to figure it out and publish on it. It's going to iterate through each of these phases a number of times and some, sometimes start again at the very beginning because we were wrong. That's totally fine. Um, we want to connect this process mostly through metadata and version control in a lot of different ways. So there's features to support all of these pieces um, and some of the buried links in here are examples of those if you want to look at them later. Uh, I'm going to quickly get to our roadmap. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're built for scientists by scientists. One of the major shifts in strategic direction was hiring a product manager. Immediate follow-on point was hiring a UX person. <laughs> so a lot of our focus 
going forward is around enhancing usability of the existing system. It's quite powerful um, and candidly pieces of it are quite confusing. So we'll be focusing on revamping lots of pieces to make it more approachable, frankly, um, but still focusing on what the scientists need to do their day to day. Um, so we'll be adding support for workflows and cloud computing um, and integrations with those outside systems. We don't intend to roll our own. We intend to adopt some common standards um, and interoperate with those folks. Um, this is another case where we kind of built a thing early on and then standards became more available. So we have a, a DIY system for evaluations and queues. It sounds a lot like workflows and processes. So we'll be sort of deprecating our old system and adopting the common standards. Um, another folks mentions building up communities. So we have um, the organizing principle for Synapse is research projects. Um, and people can be organized into teams for group permissions and other sorts of fancy stuff, but groups of projects often make more sense than individual projects um, individually. So we'll be building up, um, well, really operationalizing. We've been sort of ad hoc grouping projects under parent projects. It's not going to fly for very much longer. So we're trying to figure out how to build those up into proper communities. Um, we will be adding and expanding um, OAuth 2.0 support. Um, to integrate with different systems, primarily to support workflows and distributed data storage, because nobody has any interest in shuffling around terabytes of data just to compute on it. Um, again, adding lots of UX support. If you look at the website, um, we're actively shipping new UX improvements every week. Um, so things are going to change. Um, and then I also want to call out improved support for provenance. So one of the cool things that we have done from the very beginning is support the W3C spec for provenance um, so that all of the bits and pieces in Synapse can be connected um, through those processes, but it's really hard to use. So it exists. You can use it if you want. Um, good luck. And so <laughs> we're going to be adding um, some usability support for that as well as allowing it to become walkable and searchable, which I think will really enhance the existing provenance relationships that are already there and perhaps convince other people to add them. Okay, that's it. There's more buried slides. Thank you for questions there.